What's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to be reviewing one of the most anticipated games of the year, Anthem. Let's get right into it. Alright, so everything about this game so far looks aesthetically pleasing to the T. This game looks phenomenal. And through and through, there's a lot of factors that relate to a lot of different games. Uh, a lot of people have related this game to Destiny, as far as you can see of this main hub here, of where you will interact with other other characters, uh, NPCs, and and change out your gear and do other things like you do in Destiny and quite a few other games. Um, but a lot of people relate this to Destiny straight off. De but the graphics and the facial uh, features as far as their expressions and everything are on point. Um, I, I couldn't find anything negative about it. It's made for the original Bioware team that made Mass Effect 1 through 3, not Andromeda, where they dropped the ball that was made by Bioware Montreal. Um, they dropped the ball. Uh, facial features, facial uh, everything were, was just off, whether it be eyes and emotions, uh, etc. was just off. And it looks like that they've completely nailed it with this game set uh, and, and I can't really be happier with with what looks like to be gonna be the final product of all their work all right so this is set in uh, what looks like a, a, a similar you know post-apocalyptic type world or futuristic type world um, and and this world is it, just it looks phenomenal um, as you'll see here in just a moment but these suits that you get in are, are probably one of the coolest things, um, you know, since first experiencing Iron Man. Uh, there are an extraordinarily large amount of similarities to Iron Man. These exosuits are called Javelins. And like Iron Man, the one you're currently in, the Ranger, is more of a multi-use exosuit to where it does a lot of things. And I'm, I'm sensing that it's going to be functioning on speed, equipment, etc. Um, you're looking at, and then your partner that jumped in is in a Colossus. If you remember Iron Man as well, um, the giant Iron Man suit, the uh, thicker, wider one um, that I'll have up on the screen, if you remember that. If not, it's right there on the screen for you to see. And and the similarities of, yeah, it, it couldn't move as fast as the original Iron Man, but it was bulkier, it was stronger, and it could take a lot more damage. And I can see a lot of similarities like that playing out in this, this game. Uh, so far, there's no PvP that is going to happen in this game, which is kind of a good thing because it gives them a chance to focus on the core values of what the game is going to be, the story, and uh, how they want to make it in the future. And, and I can appreciate that side of what this game has to offer. Uh, I thought it was kind of funny when they had this uh, interacting interaction with this guy is that they uh, they said we're gonna save him for later we don't want to use all our ammo uh, and when you see later their ammo it looks pretty pretty hefty I mean they have some hard-hitting weapons um, but I thought that was cool because that looked amazing all right so this hands down is by far one of the coolest things of this game um, so far I, I cannot name a game where you are flying through the sky and then you can dive through water and go through like water in his caverns um, it, the, the, it just looked so amazing so beautiful to see uh, that kind of change so often nowadays with games we have this issue to where you, you immediately label water as an off-limit zone right so you, you you see water and you know that that's gonna kill me I destiny water land off the map kills you um halo water kills you the dude can fly from fucking space and hit the ground and live but water kills him so you, you know this game didn't do that it, it made hey these are badass exosuits they're really multi-use they're meant um for survivability and they're meant to just do more than just one thing and i think that that's really remarkable it's not just something to get you around that flies it's something that you could use to to um get through the water to get through airs to jump and to protect you uh, i thought this interaction was particularly cu cool because you get to really see the show of force of uh weaponry that you're gonna have in this game um if you play destiny bring that up if you play destiny and you remember valis tark he has a weapon salvo um, or a missile salvo that fires at you multiple times and it's shit compared to that mortar blast um, and and that is, is something special that you can see in this game when, when they uh, have their power 
weapon and, and they initiate it, it's a power weapon. And they let you know it full and full. That missile salvo is fucking epic. And look at the explosions. Look how clean and crisp they are. Um, the, the, the only thing, like, I, I like that they, they have that little afterburn right there from the explosion that was before. I would have liked a little bit more afterburn with an explosion like that um, in the graphics to, to really show the terrain burning. Um, if you notice there, there's a weapon that pops up, and uh, they show to where they say, "Hey, this is a this is a really cool weapon. I'm glad I got this one." And I think that's cool because that's giving you an idea that that's going to be that's a level 35 weapon of its type, and and it has a, a, a very good value to these people. Um, all these people, you know, they they obviously are voice actors. Um, showing off the game but you could tell that they're putting it in there for a reason that you're gonna get loot that that is it varies greatly in value um such as division and other games where, where it's loot based games and i think that that's really cool that's going to be something that's really appeasing to the uh populace when you're going in because you want to get the best stuff and you're wanting to try it out and after seeing that mortar is anybody else wondering what other badass shit you can put on your back because all I'm thinking is what other badass shit I can put on my back. I think that's fucking amazing. Alright, as you see, they ended up grouping up with Tim. They ended up grouping up with the other characters. And they jump through. Um, and they just kind of take the leap. They're like, I don't know where to go. Uh, what's going on here? And this is my area. Yeah, let's jump through the giant swirly storm let's do that and figure it out from there and i i, I think that's amazing like that's just being able to to do like they did earlier do you want to go over there hey we'll go over there earlier um or we'll go over there later that's amazing having that free roaming uh possibility to to do what you want in an open world it, it means a lot um in today's world where a lot of games now are so linear based that they take away that exploration value and that that free roaming nature that just allows you to kind of play as you want to play. Uh, I really like that about Horizon New Dawn is that you get to play and, and kind of take the story as you want. Like you can take the main missions or you can kind of take the side quest and really gain a little, lot of knowledge about your character because they put so much information in that game. And uh, to me, I think it's hands down one of the best games of the year. Uh, I, it has to be one of the best games of the year. It, there was just so much in it. The story was phenomenal. Um, there, there was things that could have been changed. It wasn't perfect, uh, but I do think it was a great game. Let me know what you guys think about Anthem. Let me know if you guys think it's going to um, just break the gaming barriers that uh, people have set. Let me know what... what you're looking forward to most about this game uh the story hopefully the later infl uh, implementation of pvp what is it that you're looking forward most in this game or what other games you're looking forward to that came out um during e3 whether it be playstation or xbox all right guys till next time deathstroke out Mr. Sniper.